This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur. Welcome to the Basic Manual SICS series, which is aimed at the resident eye surgeons who are just starting to do their first few surgeries of their career. So this series is for the absolute beginners. So here we are going to help you to understand few concepts and suggest few ways to practice and improve skill sets. First few episodes are focused on wound construction as this is the step where most beginner surgeons struggle and have lots of complications. In the first episode I'll be showing how to perform the sclerocorneal tunnel. So let's understand the morphology of the sclerocorneal tunnel. It has got an external incision, an internal incision, a roof, a floor, and it has got two side falls on either side. The external incision is in the sclera about 1.5 mm from the limbus and the internal incision is in the cornea again 1.5 mm from the limbus. In the initial learning curve one can begin by using a superiorectus traction suture. Of course once we become experienced we can opt out of it and it's not mandatory. To begin with the conjunctival peritome is done which is about 6 to 6.5 mm wide. The tenons is scraped off with a 50 number blade. This helps us to remove all the tenons which actually is the source of the bleeding which happens. Few bleeders which are there are identified and cauterized using a bipolar cautery. The next key step and probably the most important one is to fixate the globe well. The traditional teaching has been to fixate the globe by holding the conjunctiva and the tenon at the left edge of the peritomy. But most beginner surgeons traumatize the conjunctiva a lot and they really struggle at this stage. Invariably, it leads to a lot of conjunctival tear which would be pretty bad. So I am teaching my residents a new way to stabilize the globe. This is a posterior stabilization groove. So make a posterior half thickness screw in the sclera which is behind your planned scleral incision. It's usually about 3 mm long and half thickness depth. A limbs forceps is then used to fixate the globe by holding the posterior lip of the posterior groove. The globe is turned downwards slightly. A scleral groove is created 1.5 mm posterior to the limbus. The ideal thickness would be 300 to 350 micron which would be a half thickness of the sclera. Most of us use the 50 number blade but if one has access to then one can use a pre-fixed depth blade which is available in the market. Now coming to the length of the incision. In the initial learning curve one can use a slightly longer incision as it would ensure easy nucleus delivery. With experience one can reduce the incision size. To begin with you can use a straight incision and after a few cases you can do the frown incision. Now, time to create the tunnel. Now this is the crescent knife. This is how it looks. It is introduced in the center of the groove and the tunneling is begun by the wriggling motion. Now at this stage when as we begin tunneling how are we supposed to judge the depth of the blade? We should not be too superficial or we should not be too deep because both of them can have complications. Well, this is the guideline. The blade should be just visible under the sclera. If it is not seen or very difficult to see, then assume that it is too deep. And if it is too clearly seen, then it is superficial. So as we reach the limbus through a wriggling movement, we need to stop here for a moment. Because we need to understand that there is a change in the curvature of the globe as we encounter the cornea now. The corneal curvature is slightly different from the scleral curvature and that is the reason why we have to have a mild change in the direction of the blade and it has to be turned anteriorly just a bit to create the corneal part of the tunnel. The wriggling movement is continued until we reach about 1.5 mm into the cornea. Now the central portion of the sclerocorneal tunnel is done and now we have to do the lateral extension on either side. We can achieve this by doing either of the movements. I call them the two sweeping movements. In the first variant, the blade which begins at the corneal end and moves backwards towards the sclera. This is what I call the back sweep. The globe is firmly fixated as the back sweep movements are being continued laterally. Now creating the corneoscleral tunnel. At the extreme ends, the sweeping movements are continued to create the scleral side pockets. Now there is an another variant of the sweeping movement for the lateral extension of the tunnel. This is what I call as a front sweep. In this case, I am moving the blade from the sclera to the front into the cornea. 
hence the term the front sweep again the front sweeping motion is continued until we reach the lateral end so it's up to the surgeon to choose either the moments of lateral extension i prefer the front sweep but most of my trainees are more comfortable with the back sweep so you can decide what you prefer and another important concept to understand during lateral extension of the tunnel the blade is tilted sideways as the sweeping movements are being done this is simply because we have to respect the global curvature which is changing as we move laterally well this is to be expected as the globe is spherical in nature so on either side when doing the lateral extension either the front sweep or the back sweep this change in the direction of the globe has to be respected the slight tilt of the blade has to be done now once you created this clear corneal tunnel now is the time to enter the inner chamber and create the internal entry viscoelastic in the tunnel delineates the boundary of the internal lip a bevel up sharp keratome which is measuring 2.5 mm is slid into the tunnel until it reaches the end point of the tunnel of the internal lip and as we touch the internal lip we can see a small dimple appear and this is the point at which we need to enter the blade then perforates the inner wall of the corneal tunnel and then the blade enters full thickness into the inner chamber the internal lip is then extended laterally on either side until the entire span of the corneal tunnel which were created initially the next episode is going to be in detail on the creation of the internal lip so let us revise now find a good way to stabilize the globe i prefer and recommend the posterior fixation groove for the beginners turn the globe slightly down away from you you create the appropriate depth scleral groove start the tunnel in the center by the wriggling movement be mindful to change the angle just as we reach the limbus it has to be just a bit so that we respect the corneal curvature wriggling motion is continued until we reach 1.5 mm into the cornea and then the lateral extension of the tunnel is done by the sweeping movements one can choose either the back sweep or the front sweep now how do you practice these movements in your initial learning curve i think practicing these movements mentally and with your hands hundreds of time before actually you perform the surgery live will hasten your learning curve this would help you to clarify your concepts and this is a video footage of the bare hand practicing the movements so you're fixating the globe with your left hand and there's a slight downturn of the globe the initial wriggling motion of the crescent blade into the sclera is a slight change in the direction of the blade on reaching the limbus and the wriggling movement continues until we reach the corneal tunnel until we create the corneal tunnel then there is a lateral sweeping motion for extension of the tunnel this is the back sweep where the blade is cutting from the cornea to the sclera and this is the front sweep where you are starting from sclera and going on into the cornea and as we reach laterally you can see the blade is slightly tilted down to respect the change in the curvature of the globe so practicing this mentally hundreds of times before you perform the first few cases does help also i am a firm believer that visualization does help and also practice visualization this has to be done a day before the surgery visualize yourself sitting under the microscope and performing these steps correctly it does help so that was it hope you found this video helpful and see you soon